Uh, today we are going to continue our discussion. Uh, last time we talked about how to conduct sieve analysis test and we solve this problem here. And in order to solve the uh, sieve analysis problem, you need to determine the percentage passing. So you need to uh, make a table like this one and uh, uh, through a certain steps you will be able to determine the percentage passing. And the last step, you are going to come up with this graph between the percentage passing in the y-axis and the sieve uh, size in the x-axis. Then I'll be able to uh, say whether this uh, uh, aggregate, is it going to be uh, a good aggregate or bad aggregate? So. Uh, according or based on this curve here between the sieve size and the percentage passing, we are going to classify the uh, 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 aggregate distribution into four types. First, we have the maximum density gradation or the high density gradation. Also, it's uh, known by the well graded. So this curve, it's, it could be classified as well graded aggregate so what does it mean by well graded aggregate if your curve is well graded aggregate it means that your aggregates have a good mix of all particle sizes your aggregates contain a, a, a different type of aggregate sizes and that it's a good thing for us why because the percentage of the voids is going to be less and as a result you are going to use less binder so for instance if you are going to use or if you are going to uh, produce a uh, uh, portland cement concrete in this case you are going to use less amount of cement the amount of the cement is going to be less because the percentage of the void is less so the best option, uh, your gradation is going to be well graded. The second type, we have the one size gradation. Also it's known as the uniform. So if your uh, distribution here is uniform, it means that it consists of the same size. So you have only one size. So if you have an aggregate with a one size, that means the aggregate is the, this curve is going to be vertical curve because I don't have percentage here or there. So if your distribution is uniform, you are going to get something like that. The curve is going to look like that, nearly vertical, because because you have only one size of aggregate okay and also we have the gap graded aggregates the distribution also it could be gap graded gap graded it means that you are missing some sizes and in this case you are going to have horizontal section of the curve for example here we have gap graded distribution because the size the, the, the size under the vert, uh, the horizontal curve here we are, we are not going to have the uh, aggregate size uh, below that uh, uh, horizontal curve. So, which means that I'm going to miss some sizes. Okay, so if it's gap graded here, you are going to notice horizontal uh, curve. The curve here is going to be horizontal. And down here, this size below the horizontal line, I'm going to miss the aggregate below that horizontal line. The last one is the open graded. If you have open graded distribution, it means that you are missing the small aggregates. And the small aggregates is important because they are going to fill the holes between the larger ones. So this distribution here is open, open graded and 
how did I know that? Because I miss the small sizes. So again, I have four types. Uh, the best one, the aggregate is going to be well graded. That means you are going to have uh, as minimum as possible percentage of uh, voids. The percentage of the voids is going to be as minimum as possible. And I have the one size. It means that my aggregate composed only of one size of aggregate. I have gap graded. And in that case, I'm missing some aggregate sizes. And the last one, the open uh, uh, distribution. Uh, uh, in that case, I'm going to miss the small aggregates. So once I finish from the uh, uh, sieve analysis test, I'm going to classify my curve according to one of this, these four types. Also, if I do know the uh, maximum aggregate size of my aggregate, I can uh, imagine the, uh, uh, the uh, well-graded curve is going to look like. So uh, if for this example here, if I have uh, this sample of aggregate, I have a sample of fine aggregate, and of course, I'll be able to determine to uh, the maximum aggregate size. Remember, we uh, uh, discussed the uh, concept of the maximum aggregate size either by using the traditional definition or the super paved definition. And if you know this, you will be able to uh, generate uh, uh, a curve that represents the maximum density gradation. So how I'm going to do that, we have a formula we have this formula here if I'm going to use this formula I'll be able to generate maximum density gradation and the uh, density of the aggregate is a function of the size distribution of the aggregate and the relationship for determining the distribution of aggregate that provide the maximum density or minimum amount of voids so the maximum density, it means minimum amount of voids. So how we are going to use this formula? In this formula, we are going to determine the percentage passing through each sieve. What is the optimum value that is going to make my aggregate with minimum amount of voids? Or is going to make my aggregate with maximum density? So in order to do that, this formula will help me to determine the uh, percentage passing for each sieve. So the percentage passing is going to be PI. Uh, I here refer to the sieve size. It's going to be 100% times DI over D uh, to, the, to the power N. And according to the Federal Highway Administration, recommended a value of 0. 4, 5 for the value of n. Di represent the size sieve in question, while D capital here represent the maximum size of aggregate. So if I know the uh, maximum size of aggregate, and I know all the sieve size, I'll be able to determine the percentage passing of the sieve. And the curve that is going to be generated from this equation is going to give us the maximum density. Let's see an example here. Let's say that I'm going to conduct sieve analysis test with the following sieves. And the maximum aggregate size for this aggregate is 25 millimeter in this example. I need to know the maximum, the, 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 the maximum density for this uh, uh, aggregate sample. In order to do that, in order to know the maximum density distribution, I'm going to use this formula here, this formula. I'm going to uh, apply this formula for each sieve. 
for this sieve and that sieve until the last sieve. So I'm going to determine the uh, percentage passing for, for example, the first sieve. The value of di, the sieve in question here, is 25 millimeter. And d capital represent the maximum aggregate size. So the maximum aggregate size is going to be constant, which is 25. So now I have only one variable, which is di. Di represent the sieve in question. So for the first sieve, the, the percentage passing is going to be 100% time di, which is 25, and d capital, which is also 25. And this one over that one is going to give me 1. 1 to, to, to the power 0 0.45 is 1. That means the percentage passing regarding the uh, 25 millimeter sieve is going to be 100%. Then I'm going to run that equation again for the next sieve. For 19 millimeter sieve, the uh, PI is going to be 100% times 19 over 25 to the power 0 0.45. And the value came out to be 88 and so on. So now this distribution is going to give me maximum density. Okay, so if I'm going to run this equation here, I'll be able to know the uh, maximum possible density for my aggregate. Okay, I'll be able to generate this curve here. And then I'm going to compare it with the uh, uh, real uh, sieve analysis uh, curve. Doing that, I'll be able to know uh, how good the distribution of my uh, aggregate. So let's say that I conduct this test here. And I need to know how good my distribution. You could say that it's difficult to, to, to tell whether my curve is it dense or gap. Maybe it's something in between. That is going to depend on my judgment. And in engineering, I need something solid, something concrete. So that is why they come up with this curve, or with this table here. In this table, I'm going to be able to say whether my aggregate is good for, uh, for usage or not. So here we have aggregate grading requirements for the super BEF asphalt mix design. So those who are responsible for uh, uh, come up with uh, guidelines for super BEF asphalt mix design, they uh, give, gave us this table here to uh, tell whether my aggregate is going to be good for use or not. So how I'm going to use this uh, table here. In this table, we have the sieve size on the uh, on the left. Yeah, it, it starts from 50 and is going to end at 0 0.075, which is sieve number 200. Here I have the uh, maximum uh, uh, nominal maximum size. Remember, we define the nominal maximum aggregate size. So. I'm going to use one of these columns. I have like six options. I have option one, two, three, four, five, and six. So which column I'm going to use? It depends on the nominal maximum size. So I need to know the nominal maximum size uh, so that I'll be able to decide which column should I, should I use. So if my nominal maximum aggregate size, let's say that my nominal maximum size is 90. So in this case, I'm going to choose that column here. And I'm going to compare that column with my result to tell whether my aggregate is going to satisfy this requirement or not. So let's see an example here at the table. And here we the results that we have got from the uh, example, right? So from this example here, we come up with that uh, table, right? So now we are going to compare our result with that table to tell whether my aggregate is going to satisfy the requirement for the super pave asphalt mix or not. So 
in this example, let us assume that the uh, maximum aggregate size is sieve number four. So sieve number four is going to be the maximum aggregate size, which means that I'm going to choose this column here. So I'm going to choose this column here. Now I need to look at the first sieve. The first sieve is sieve number four. Regarding sieve number four, the, it says that for sieve number four, the uh, percentage passing should be between 90% and 100%. I'm going to look here. But you need to notice that here we have the first option. The first option, I need to look at sieve number 12.5. But here I don't, I don't see sieve number 20, uh, uh, 12.5. But you need to think about it. If this one is sieve number four and the percentage passing is 100, it means that sieve number uh, uh, 9.5 is also going to be 100%. And sieve number 12.5 uh, also is going to be 100%. Because this one here is 100%. So it means that in this case here, the 12.5 uh, uh, sieve uh, is going to pass uh, the percentage passing is going to be 100%. And in the criteria here, uh, I have 100%. That means uh, uh, sieve 12.5 uh, passed this criteria. Then I need to look at sieve uh, 9.5. In the criteria, it says that the percentage passing should be between 95% uh, and 100%. Again, in my case here, uh, sieve 9.5 millimeter uh, is going to pass the criteria because it's 100%. And the range here between 95% and 100%. Now let's go to sieve number four, this one here. In my analysis, the percentage passing is 100%. And in the criteria here, it, uh, it has a range between 90% and 100%. So this one here pass the criteria. Then regarding sieve, 2.36 uh, sieve, this one here, we don't have any criteria on that one. So we are going to ignore this one. Also, we don't have any criteria on this sieve. So we are going to ignore this one. But we do have criteria on sieve 1.18. Uh, 1 we have criteria on this one. It says that uh, the percentage passing through sieve 1.18 should be between 30 and 60%. I'm going to look here and the percentage passing is 66 percent so 66 percent is more than 60 right it means that uh, 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 that sieve is not going to satisfy the criteria so the criteria is going to fail here also i need to look at sieve number 200 0.075 in the criteria it says that the percentage should be the percentage passing should be between six and twelve. I'm going to look at uh, sieve number two hundred, and the percentage passing is three point one. Again, uh, the uh, uh, number here is not going to satisfy the criteria. So I'm going to reject that uh, aggregate because the aggregate is not going to satisfy the criteria, which means that the aggregate is not going to ha have uh, a good density that is why i'm going to uh, uh, tell whether my aggregate is going to be good or not also it's very important to determine the finest modulus the finest modulus is a measurement for gradation fineness we are going to use a uh, finest modulus to uh, determine the concrete mix design and also for uh, daily quality control for concrete mix design. And we, uh, it has a range between 2.3 and 3.1. If the value is, is higher, that means the aggregate is coarser. I mean that the aggregate is not finer. And if the uh, number is lower, that means the aggregate is finer aggregate. So let's see example here uh, to learn how to determine the finest modulus. This example is the same example that it has been solved uh, 
to determine uh, the percentage passing. So here we determine the percentage passing, but we need to know uh, how uh, to determine the value of the finest modulus. According to this formula, the finest modulus is the uh, uh, summation of the cumulative percentage return on a certain sieves. Sieve 100, number 100, number 50, 30, 16, 8, 4, and 3 over 8 inches sieve. So I'm going to sum them together and it's going to be over 100. So which column should I use? According to the uh, uh, formula here, RI represents the cumulative percentage return. So here I have the cumulative percentage return. So I'm going to use only this column here. Not this column, not that column. This column, which is the cumulative percentage return. Here represent RI, represent the cumulative percentage return. But on a certain sieve, specific sieves, sieve, 100, 50, 30, 16, 8, 4, and 3 over 8 inches, which we don't have in this case. So uh, I'm going to apply this formula. I'm going to get the summation of the cumulative percentage return for sieve one, number 100. So I'm going to put this one and sieve number 50. I'm going to put this one and sieve number 30. I'm going to put this one here. And sieve number 16, I'm going to put this one here. And finally, uh, sieve number uh, uh, 8, I'm going to put this one here. Of course, I need to put also sieve number 4, but the value is 0. So I'm going to follow this sequence here. Sieve 100, 50, 30, 16, 8, 4, and 3 over 8 inch. So I'm going to put this number. I'm going to divide it by uh, 100. And the answer came out to be 2.61. So uh, the value makes sense because it's within the range of 2.3 to 3.1. Okay. And if let's say that I have another uh, sample of aggregate and the answer came out to be 2.7. Now, which one uh, is going to have coarser sieve, uh, coarser aggregate? 2.6 or 2.7? The answer is 2.7 is uh, is going to have uh, a coarser aggregate than 2.6 uh, aggregate. And 2.6 is finer aggregate than 2.7. Okay? So be aware of that point. So uh, like you can see here in this example, we said that this aggregate is not going to satisfy my requirement, right? Because it fell at uh, uh, sieve uh, uh, number 16, and also it failed at sieve number 200, right? So what should I do about that? I went to a site, and, and, uh, and the sieve came out to be uh, not fit for my use. In, the, in that case, what should I do? The, the, uh, the solution is I can uh, mix my uh, aggregate with another source of aggregate. We call this blending. Okay, we call this blending. So like you can see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, five. We have four, five types of different aggregate. So we got this aggregate for, from side one. We got that aggregate from side, side two and side three, side four and side five. Because uh, in the most cases, a single aggregate source is generally unlikely to meet the gradation requirements for portal and cement or as for concrete mixes. So if you go to your aggregate from only one side, there is high uh, possibility that your aggregate is not going to meet the uh, gradation requirement, like this example here. So this aggregate does not meet the requirement, right? So I need to get another aggregate from another side, and I'm going to mix them together. Then I'm going to have a new uh, aggregate with new percentage passing, right? We call this blending. So blending aggregate gradation, it means that uh, I'm going to blend of aggregate from two or more sources would be required to satisfy the specification. 
So in order to satisfy the specification, I'm going to mix at least two sources in order to get uh, a new aggregate that can satisfy the requirements. So I'm going to uh, mix, let's say, source one, source two, three, four, and five, and I'm going to get blended aggregate with the new percentage passing, right? So this aggregate, it has its own percentage passing, the same here, the same there, and the same here. And the uh, blended aggregate, the new mix, of course, is going to have new uh, percentage passing. So how I'm going to, de to, to determine that? We are going to use this formula here. It's very simple, and that formula makes sense for us. The new percentage passing is going to be the percentage passing for the source one times the the uh, percentage by weight. How much did we uh, put? Uh, how much of that aggregate it has been contributed to the blended aggregate? So let's say here, if I'm going to put equal amounts, the percentage here is going to be 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, and 20%. If the if we put uh, uh, all of these forces uh, as equal amount, right? But sometimes we don't do that. Uh, so sometimes we are going to change the percentage so that we are going to satisfy the gradation requirements. So using this formula, I'll be able to determine the percentage blending material passing uh, through uh, each seed. Okay, so the formula here is simple. The percentage passing uh, through the blended aggregate is going to be the percentage passing for the first source times the decimal fraction by weight of aggregates used in the blend. So maybe we use 30%, maybe we use 40%, okay? Maybe we use here 4% and here 1%, 1%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10 and here we are going to use uh, uh, 30%, for example so that the uh, submission is going to be 100%. So using this formula, I'll be able to know uh, the uh, new percentage passing. So let's, this, uh, let's look at this example here. Uh, here I have the specification for my aggregate. The specification is uh, the uh, percentage passing through sieve 12.5. Uh, 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 it should be 100%. For 9.5, it should be between 90% and 100%, and so on. And also, I can uh, uh, determine the target gradation. So if the range is 100%, it means that the target is going to be 100%. If the range between 95% and 100%, it means that the, 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 the target gradation it could be 97 or 98, right? And so on. So I have the range, and I have the target gradation. I have source one and I have source two. So here I have uh, source A and here I have source B. For the source A, here I have the percentage passing for each sieve regarding source A. And here I have the percentage passing regarding source B. Like you can see here for source A, the value here uh, satisfies the requirement the value here satisfies the requirement, but the value here does not satisfy the requirement. This one is 98 and the range between 70 and 85. Also, this value does not satisfy the requirement here. And also this value and this value and that value. That is why I'll not be able to use source A alone. I need to mix source A with another source. And here I have source B. Again, source B satisfies this point. It does not satisfy this requirement and also does not satisfy this requirement and also does not satisfy that requirement. So uh, uh, source from uh, uh, source A does not satisfy the requirement and also uh, source B does not satisfy the requirement. But if I'm going to mix them together with a certain percentage, I'll be able to have new aggregate that can satisfy the requirement. But now, which percentage should, should I use? Should I use 50% from here and 50% and from there? Or should I change the percentage? So here we are, it depends on uh, how far this uh, aggregate from the uh, target and this aggregate from the target 
I'm going to make a guess. If my guess is not correct, then I'm going to change the percentage. Okay? So it's a process of try and error. I'm going to assume a certain percentage. I'm going to see the, uh, uh, the new blend. I'm, I'm going to compare it with the specification. And then I'm going to tell whether uh, that uh, aggregate is going to satisfy the requirement or not. So in this example, again, in order to know the percentage passing for the new aggregate, the blended aggregate, I'm going to use this formula. In this formula, I only have A and B. I don't have source C. So this one is going to be canceled. So PI is going to be AI, the percentage passing for the uh, uh, aggregate from, from source A times the uh, decimal fraction. And here I'm going to have the percentage passing from the source B times the decimal fraction. So I'm going to use 30% of uh, aggregate from source A. That means the decimal fraction is going to be uh, 0 0.3. And here I'm going to use 70% of this aggregate okay and it means that the, the decimal fraction is going to be 0 0.7 so now i'm going to determine aia aia this number is going to be 100% uh, the ai times 0 0.3 uh, the decimal fracture is going to be 30 and also regarding uh, 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 the uh, source b uh, bi b is going to be uh, 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 100% times 0 0.7. Also, I'm going to uh, uh, apply this for this case and that case, this case and that case. This one, this value is going to be 100% times 0 0.3 and this value is going to be 94 times 0 0.7. This value represents 98 times uh, 0 0.3 while this value here represents uh, 70 times 0 0.7. Then I'm going to sum this value plus that value. This value plus that value. Now I'm going to get the uh, percentage passing for the for the blend. Now I say I assume that the percentage here is going to be 30%, while the percentage here is going to be 70%, right? Then I'm going to have new PI. I'm going to compare the new PI with the specification. So this one is 100%, 100%. We are good on this. 96%, yes, it's between 90, 90, uh, 95 and 100%. I have 78%, yes, it satisfies my requirement. 61, yes, it satisfies my requirement. 31, it also satisfies my requirement. 14, it also satisfies my requirement. And 6.4, it also satisfies my requirement. That means the percentage here is good. Okay? You could use 50% and 50% and determine PI and then compare with the specification okay then you are going to tell whether the new blend is going to satisfy the requirement or not also uh, uh, since you combine different aggregates that means the properties is going to uh, be different right so for example you have angularity for source a and also you have angularity for for uh, source b you have absorption uh, absorption value for course A, uh, and also you have absorption value for source B, right? So how I'm going to know the new uh, uh, property for the blended aggregate? The, the X represent the uh, composite property of the blend, and P1 here represent the decimal fraction by weight of the aggregate, while X here represent the property of the fractions 1, 2, and 3. So let's see this, this example here. I have coarse aggregate from two stockpiles. I have two sources. Having coarse aggregate angularity, uh, which means that the crushed faces of 40% and 90%. So the uh, aggregate from source A, it has 40% crushed faces, while the aggregate from source B, it has 90% uh, crushed faces. They has been blended at a ratio of uh, 30 70 which means that uh, the uh, the blended it has 30 percent of the uh, source a and 70 percent of source b by weight now we need to know what is the percentage of the crushed faces of the aggregate blend the, uh, the crushed faces of the blend is going to be uh, 30 percent the fracture from source a time the the 40 percent the value of the crushed faces the percentage of the crushed faces plus 
0 0.7 which is the uh, decimal fracture for from uh, source b time 90 percent which is the uh, crossed faces of source b and the new uh, crossed faces of the blended came out to be 75 percent okay similarly we are going to determine the uh, properties of the blend aggregate regarding the specific gravity regarding the specific gravity it cannot be determined using this formula we are going to use this formula because this formula is not going to give us good result so regarding the specific gravity we have a special formula okay also p1 represent the decimal fraction g1 represent the specific gravity for source a g2 represent the specific gravity for source b and g3 represent the specific gravity for source uh, c p1 represent the percentage of the source a p2 represent the percentage of source b and p3 represent the percentage of source c and you can apply the formula and the value here represent the uh, uh, specific gravity for the blend okay i'm going to stop at this uh, point here so if you have any questions uh, please ask me